Hello, Journey Church, and welcome back to our last kids' life for this year. I know, our last one. It's really kind of sad. But you know what happens next week? That's right, Vacation Bible School. I'm so excited. I can't wait for you to join me on focusing in on God and our faith. If you haven't registered, go ahead and get registered quickly as this Saturday, Yes, this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., you can come pick up your craft bag slash supplies. There's some really, really cool stuff in there, too. That'll be June 13th, so from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., um, and we're so excited to get started next Monday. All right, well, let's go ahead and focus in on our Fruits of the Spirit lesson. Put your hands up in the air, put them in a trap, put them in your lap. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we get to come and learn from you and focus in on your word. I thank you that you've taught us how to live and how to act, that we can honor you um, in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, you guys have been doing a great job of sending me your memory verses. I love watching your videos. All right, let's go ahead and say the whole verse together. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5.22. Okay, I may have said it a little faster or a little slower than you did, but that's okay as long as you got it. Now, fruits of the Spirit, are they my peaches and my pears kind of fruit? No, not exactly. It's not that kind of fruit. Fruit of the Spirit is fruits that come from your life. So basically, when you're a follower of Christ, when you know that you're a sinner, and Christ died for your sin and my sin, that he rose from the dead and wants a relationship with you, you're a Christ follower. And people and God are going to see that you are a Christ follower by your fruits. So people are going to see that you love differently, that you love like Christ loves or you're kind, or that you show really good self-control. Those kind of things show other people and God that you are a follower of Christ. I'll give you an example. My grandmother was not a believer in Jesus Christ. She didn't know who he was, but my family, we were. Christ was the center of our family and the center of our lives. So when we were around my grandmother, my grandmother noticed and said to my mom, your family is different than all the other families I see, because she didn't have many other people who knew Christ in her life. Your family's different. How are you different? Well, my mom and I know that we're different because we have Christ in our lives and he shows us and teaches us how we are to live. So people notice, my grandmother noticed that we were different. Um, just watch, if you continue to show love like Jesus loves and kindness and goodness, the fruits of the spirit, People will notice that you're different, and that's an amazing thing because then we can share with them who Jesus is and who he was, uh, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and continue into our last three of our fruits of the Spirit. The first one being faithfulness. Yep, faithfulness. Faithfulness is completely trusting or confidence in God. Um, having faithfulness and showing faithfulness um, it's through different acts of how you do it, of how you worship God, how you are um, trusting him with your life. Even though you're unsure of what's going on, you know that God is in control. So let's play a little bit of a game and see if you can help me figure out what is faithful and what is unfaithful. So what we're going to do, I need to get your hands ready. You ready? Wiggle your fingers. All right. So what we're going to do, when I say a statement, you're going to tell me if it's being faithful by putting your hands up in the air. Go ahead. Put your hands up in the air. No, really, go ahead, put your hands up in the air. Good job. So this means faithful, okay? And when you put your hands down, that's unfaithful. So really quick, show me faithful and unfaithful. Very good. All right, so here's our first statement. You tell me if it's faithful or unfaithful by putting your hands up in the air, all right? Someone who keeps their word. So what they say they do. Is that faithful or unfaithful? That's right. Faithful. Someone who keeps their word. They, they are going to do what they say they're going to do is faithful. Very good. All right. Here's our second one. 
someone who breaks their promises. Faithful, unfaithful, which one? That's right, unfaithful. Unfaithful people break their promises to God and to others. When we're faithful to our family and our friends and to God, when we promise something, we keep it and we're faithful that way. All right, here's another one. What about worships God every day? Faithful, unfaithful. That's right, faithful. We are faithful when we worship God every day. We talked about how we can worship in our last series. There's so many different ways that it would be pretty easy to worship God every day. All right, let's do two more, okay? Are you ready? All right, someone who never prays. Unfaithful, faithful. Never praise would be unfaithful. You're right. Never praying or talking to God, you're not showing that you have a relationship with him. Being faithful means talking to him, listening to him, and that means prayer. All right, last one. Are you faithful or unfaithful when you read God's word, the Bible? That's right, faithful. You guys are so good at this. You're faithful. So we can show that we're faithful to God and to others when we keep our promises, when we worship God with all that we are, when we read his word, when we pray and talk to him. That's great. Sounds like you guys have a really good knowledge of faithful. Very good. All right, our second one. You ready? The second fruit of the Spirit we're talking about today is gentleness. So can you put your arms like this for me? What does it look like we're doing? That's right. We're like holding a baby. So gentleness is being kind, softness of action. So like when you're holding a baby or a brand new little puppy or kitten, you're as gentle and kind as possible. You don't want to shake it around or drop it. You be as gentle and kind as possible. Now, that can be sometimes hard to do to be gentle. But what does it mean to be gentle with others? Well, you can be gentle in your words. For instance, when you're playing with something and your brother or sister takes it out of your hands and you go, you're not nice. Now that wasn't very gentle with our words. Instead, when they took that toy out of your hand, you can say, that really hurt me when you took that toy out of my hand. There's a gentle way to say it. I know it can be hard to do it at times because you're just so frustrated that somebody did something to hurt you, but being gentle with our kind, with our words and with our actions. So when you're handling something carefully, you know, being gentle when your mom and dad come in and going up and giving them a big hug, that's a sign of gentleness being soft and kind towards others. Philippians 4, 5 says, let your, gener your gentleness be evident to all. Evident means to everybody. Let everybody see that you are gentle and kind. So just showing your gentleness by giving a hug or a high five, maybe not right now as we're still in the season of the virus, but that's okay, the germs. That's okay to not do it now, but showing your gentleness in life with your words and your actions. All right, let's look at our very last and our third fruit of the Spirit for today. It is self-control. Now, self-control is being in charge of your feelings, your actions, and your thoughts, and making sure that you're doing the right thing. So basically, making yourself do something that is not easy or doing something you really don't want to do. So sometimes showing that self-control of when somebody hits you, you don't hit them back. Showing that self-control, showing that you can control your anger and control your sadness. Self-control, it doesn't mean you aren't angry or upset. You can still have those feelings, that's okay. But not doing something right away because somebody hurt you. So self-control is just trying to make sure you don't sin. Remember, sin was anything I think, say, or do that displeases God. Now, a really, really good example of this was Jesus. Do you remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert and Satan tempted him with three different things? Jesus showed self-control by when Satan tempted him with food because he hadn't eaten in a long time. Jesus quoted back scripture and he showed self-control that he didn't have to sin. All three times that Satan tempted him, Jesus was in self-control 
and able to not sin or go against what God wanted because he was self-controlled and he knew God's word. Now, it's hard for us sometimes when we're so frustrated and angry and we just want to lash out. But showing that self-control, people notice when you don't explode and get angry when something goes wrong. Or people notice when everything else in the world is going crazy, you are still calm and trusting and faithful to God, knowing that he's going to take care of everything. Self-control is something I'm still having to learn myself. So it's not something that's easy and good to go right away. It's something we continually learn. Just like the rest of all of the fruits of the Spirit, we have to learn and show them to others. So again, our fruits of the Spirit were love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You can find those Galatians 5.22. If you are loving God and loving others and showing who Christ is by the fruits of the Spirit, people will know you are Christ's follower. Now, I'm sad to say this was our last kid's life, but don't worry, we'll be coming back sooner than later. So enjoy your summer, enjoy your Wednesday nights, and get excited as VBS is starting next Monday. I'm so excited. All right, let's go ahead and pray, and we'll be finished. Father, thank you for who you are. Thank you for the fruits of the Spirit that we can know that we are yours by the fruit we produce, by showing others love and joy and peace and patience, kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Lord, I just thank you that you've shown us what it looks like to be in self-control and to be in the fruits of the Spirit as Jesus did it daily and constant. Lord, I pray that each one of my friends who's watching, that they will learn to live out the fruits of the Spirit. I also pray for next week's Vacation Bible School, that we would hear from you and learn something new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, get ready to focus in on God. Can't wait to see you next Monday for Vacation Bible School.